Hi everybody, Mary Mitchell here. I'm going to show you how I framed this and then I put uh, a dust cover on this painting. And um, it was a pour and um, a controlled pour that I did some brush work on. I think you probably saw, or I did have it posted on my Facebook page, but um, it looks like this. This is one part of it. It's a whale's tail and it's a loader frame that I'm going to be um, affixing into um, that, you know, the painting into this and the inside looks like, you know, like this. So it sits flush and I have to drill holes through here into the frame, which I brought. I actually went to Home Depot and I bought these screws for. I apologize, guys. I keep saying frame when I'm referencing the canvas. I, I guess, you know, so, I mean, I, you probably know, but just in case, uh, just know that um, I mean canvas. And I'm about to tell you in this one that that canvas, that the frame was warped. The frame was not warped. It was the canvas. Okay, thanks. You'll see the back is done in archival paper, which breathes. I know there's some speech and debate about a dust cover. I prefer them. Um, I did my research and I... I feel that the pros outweigh the cons. And you guys, you know, it's up to you. This is not me saying, you have to do this. Uh, no way, I don't do that. <laughs> There's no way I would do that. So when you look at them both together, carefully I will do this. Um, it will look, you know, the other frame, it will be in the other frame. It looks like this. Okay, so that's, this is the one we're doing today. This one's done. Very happy with the way this came out, and I'm hoping that this, this, uh, the, uh, the, the one I'm doing will be no different. So there it is. And uh, sorry about that noise. I'm doing a voiceover so you don't so have to I'm hear it. Be, um, walking you through some of the. Um, which I did, I did post something on it, uh, about attaching a dust cover. I did an entire video on framing a three quarter inch deep canvas painting. This is an inch and a half. It's a more challenging, it's heavier. Uh, the other one was, the other part of this painting was especially challenging because, um, it just was, uh, the frame was slightly warped. It wasn't the frame that was warped, it was the canvas. Sorry, guys. The only way that it affect the frame, because you can't even tell, is that, um, you know, I just had to make, uh, I just had to make the appropriate, appropriate adjustments, but the integrity and everything about it is, uh, is just the way I wanted it to be. So that's that, and that's what we're going to be doing with this guy right here. And I'm going to get the rest of my supplies, and uh, let's begin. It's good to see you, and uh, I'll talk to you. Talk to you in a minute. Okay, here we go. You're going to see me measuring a lot, and I'm trying to prove a point here with this particular frame and this particular canvas. The canvas is um, an inch and a half wide, and the frame that I'm working on is a floater frame that you've just set the uh, canvas painting directly just set it right in there um, and as I'm doing right now so you can see how quote easy <laughs> it is uh, but there's major steps that need to be done you just don't plop it in there and uh, and nail it in you don't need Z hooks you don't need L hooks you don't need any of those um, uh, types of uh, uh, tools, equipment um, to put in here, to put this frame in. You need screws and you need to measure. And it's not hard. And I, I might spend a little bit of extra time on here so I can really drive the point home 
Um, I'm going to measure the, um, the canvas here. The canvas, I said in one of my videos that I wasn't um, sure about the anatomy. Okay, here we go. So there it is. The canvas is, um, uh, you can see where I'm pointing. So it's um, a little less than two inches wide. And the, 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 the uh, part that I'm concerned about that you're looking at right there is the wood part without the canvas stretched into it. And that's about an inch as you can see. And so what I want to do is I want to, okay, I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry to jump around like this here. I went and got a, a frame and I'm measuring where I want the nail to be on this canvas, which is the same type of canvas. So you can see it's right in the middle there and I'm going to do a close up. So I want the nail to be right about there. So now here we go, sorry, back, back to the other one. Okay, so I'm flipping the canvas over, uh, the frame over. I'm showing you where I want the nail to be in relation to the um, frame. So remember when I said that I wasn't sure the anatomy of this frame? Well, I know now. See, my fingers are going right underneath and it's solid wood from the outside of that to the inside. And so to prove it, I went and got a paper clip, a thick paper clip, and I tried to jam it through just to prove my point to myself mostly to make sure that this is solid through and through. And we lose that little dip where the canvas is stretched into, but that's not bad at all. So, you, you know, you really have a good piece of solid wood there, but I still don't want to nail into that part of the frame of the canvas anyway. I want to stay on that roughly, you know, inch saw, uh, part of the wood where the canvas is not stretched into. So this is a kind of tricky to try to explain, but try to go with me here. Um, again, I'm trying to make a point here, and that is that uh, when we are measuring the this frame we lose about a quarter inch on the very edge because you know of how the frame is um, constructed you know you lose that piece that that uh, I guess you'd call it the outer you know the the um, the edge of it okay so so I, I lose that so when I'm measuring the back side of that frame I take that in, into consideration when I am marking, making the markings for the screws to go into. So you can see um, that this part of the where I'm pointing to, that's all we have to work with. And that's what I was measuring. And that part that I'm pointing to on the canvas goes flush against it. So that outer ridge there, the, the floater frame, the uh, edge of it, is the part that we lose. Um, I hope I'm making myself clear, but I think I think you understand, or I'm, I'm hoping you understand. Feel free to you know comment or make you know, any questions that you have. Now there might be an easier way to do this, but for me, this is how I did it. Um, so now I'm making the markings based on all these measurements that I took of where I want my screws to go. Um, uh, from the frame into the canvas. And I'm very comfortable with this because I've done it, you know, a couple of times. Well, actually, I've done it a few times now. So I'm, I'm comfortable, and I really like these frames, by the way. They're easy. So I'm just re-looking at my markings, taking into consideration the... Uh, the part where the, uh, you know, the indent is. Uh, you'll see a better shot of that when I'm screwing them in. I'm also trying to remember part, the first part of this painting, how many screws I used. And, um, but, but that doesn't mean that I should use the same amount. And, you know, uh, it's still good to just look at it anyway. I'm not just going to go back to the other one that I framed and put the cover on and say, I'll do the exact same thing. I knew, I knew a lot more now than I did then. And, um, and that is that 
all slides and all canvases is not created equal. Uh, the other one needed a little special care. So anyway, here's the um, here's the spaces that I've got that I've used over and again. And I want to make sure that um, on all the sides that I use the same number of spacers, the same width, the same number on all four sides. There's the bag I'm showing you of all the different size and widths that I have. And what I do is I put, as I said, I can't stress that enough because you really want it to be even. I did, let me put it that way. And so what I do is I put um, a set, usually, I, I think I've used three here of two of the same size in one thin piece. And I used it, uh, I do two on the lengthwise, one at the top and one at the bottom. And, you know, because if you do in the middle, there's no guarantee that the paint, painting won't shift at, at the top and the bottom or the top or the bottom. So I do, um, I start here and I slide them. And then I, I do another set and I slide it, you know, put one at the end, one at the top. And then I do another set um, across the top and the bottom. Again, all the same sides so that it's all perfectly spaced. You know, nothing's perfect, as perfect as I can get it. So this is what I'm doing here. Okay, so here's the uh, screw that I'm going to be using on all sides. It's an inch long. It's a number eight, so it's nice and thin. It's a ball head screw. I like the top of it because it's not so big. And it, the screw goes into the frame and about halfway through the canvas. So it's got a nice big, it's not got a nice hold, but it's not gonna go through the canvas itself. It goes halfway down through the canvas frame, I should say. So this here, what you're going to look is you're going to see me drill in with a smaller screw and reverse it and pull the screw back out. Um, I do that on all four sides. I start with a smaller, there it goes, comes out. I take a smaller screw, I go around on all sides, I mark it, and I do that. Uh, it's a starter screw. Uh, it's much shorter. So um, because it's easier to do that than when I go in here, I'm measuring again. It's crazy. Um, anyway, I have two brothers that are engineers. Maybe that's why. So anyway, <clears throat> so anyway, no, I just don't want to make a mistake. So here we go. I've done it already on all four sides. And that is because if you look at the size of this screw, trying to screw that in without a starter, uh, a starter hole is going to be true. It would be tricky. You know, it's a long screw. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, screw. I keep saying, I was saying nail before. So here I am, I'm showing you where I'm going to be doing it. I'm going to be putting my hand underneath the canvas, you know, in between the, um, <clears throat> the uh, canvas and the frame, the canvas frame, just like I'm showing you here. And I'm going to be taking the screw and I'm going to be uh, drilling it through. And, um, and I'm going to be doing that on all sides. I do it six times. I'm not going all the way down through because this canvas, I'm sorry, this frame is not, the wood is not hard. And I've decided that just to be on the safe side, I should take a Phillips screwdriver and then finish it that way. Um, and, and it just gives me a little bit more control. You know, the screw gun can be pretty heavy duty and it can go in and it can strip the screw and I don't want it to do that. So I'm being 
careful as far as also the last part of that, uh, getting these screws in as well. So I'm going in to recap. I go in, I make starter holes with a smaller screw all around. I then go in with my hand underneath the, the canvas frame and the frame, my thumb on top of the frame. And then I'm going to go drill the, uh, the actual screw that will stay in. And then I'm going to go around and I'm going to use a Phillips head screwdriver to then finish screwing it in carefully so I don't hurt the frame or strip the screw head. Okay, so here I am dropping the screw, putting it back on, and uh, just going through again, holding, you can see how I'm holding it. Um, gonna do that on all four sides, as I've said a few times already, I think. Okay, so now I'm finishing it up with a Phillips. I'm going to then flip it over and take out, well, there's still a few I have to do, but um, I'm going to have to flip it over and take out because I want to see what it looks like, like I said before, I commit to screwing them all in. And I can tell already by the way I'm looking at it that it's nice and even. So I am going to pull out the, um, you know, the spacers and... After I pull those spacers out, I will then flip it over and finish um, screwing the rest of the screws in with a Phillips screwdriver to then get ready and put on the dust cover. So now I'm just showing you how the spacing in between. It's not a very good shot, but you can get the idea and I'm looking at it closely looking at it on all four sides seeing that it's even I, I like the way it looks I'm pretty happy with it and uh, ready to proceed with the uh, dust cover then okay here we go we're going to put the dust cover on you like I said there is another video on applying it putting on a dust cover but if you just want to see the start to finish um just uh, stay you know stay tuned so uh, this is archival paper. It's gray. I like the I like that it matched, even though it's going to be in the back. But um, this frame is double wide, so I'm going to put two rows of uh, tape, double sided tape, on it. And um, the reason I do that is, you know, because it's a wide frame. It's archival paper. It breathes. There's pros and cons. Make sure that you research both. I've done. Uh, research on both and I the pros outweigh the cons. Um, I also go around on all six screws and I apply a small patch of insulated tape just to give it a little bit of extra protection between the top of the screw head and the um, dust cover and the wall. It doesn't hurt anything. It's it's just an extra measure, just a, just a nice touch, you know. Uh, just go the extra mile. It's it's, uh, it's very little to do. And so you can see it's close up. It just provides a little bit of extra layer there. You know, no big deal. Um, so this is the double-sided tape. It's a half inch wide. I'm going to go around to all the sides and I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, so here's the double-sided tape. I'm going to start with the inside first and I go up to the edge. I'm right-handed, so I just carefully kind of uh, push it down, and I, I just move it along, sort of inching it along with my, I'm going right hand with my left hand, I'm moving it along to, to uh, press it down onto the frame, and I just go along carefully so I can control where I want the tape to go, uh, and this is just so much easier that, for me than using a tape dispenser. I have a lot more control over where I want the tape to go. Uh, using the tape dispenser, as you can see in the left-hand corner, can be very frustrating, although it may work for some people. and So far, it hasn't really worked that great, that great for me, but I held on to it just in case. So I do this on all four sides. I do the inside. I do the outside. When I do the outside, I don't get that close to the edge. And the reason is because when I go to put the dust cover on it and then I go to trim it off with the trimmer, um, there is a very small piece of frame that shows. I didn't measure it. It's just a, 
nth of an inch. I mean, it's so small, but it's, you will see the edge of it. And, um, you, you know, I just don't want that to show. I mean, you don't need to go to the edge. You'll see, you will see at the end what I'm talking about. So when you're putting your double-sided tape on, don't get right up flush to the edge of the frame. Stay a little bit inside. So here I'm just um, just showing you, you know, lengthwise how I just carefully go along. This is uh, just staying again, it's controlling it as best I can. Sometimes, you know, it's not that even. It doesn't matter once you put the dust cover on. Um, it, you know, you can't you can't tell. So uh, it can get it can get a little uh, tedious sometimes, but. This is, um, it goes very fast, it really does. And you will see in the next frame, I've done all four sides. I just skipped through on the video and fast, you know, took some out. Now you can see, see how on the edge, how I'm, you can see part of the frame edge showing. There's a reason for that. And that is because when you put the dust cover on it and when you go to trim it off, the trimmer goes a little bit inside of the frame so that when you uh when you when you're trimming the dust cover and then you go to take it off there's a little bit of that piece of the frame showing in this case white and you'll see that very soon so i'm pulling the tape the tape off the double-sided tape you could see how very easy it is and um it just it just comes off really easy. Make sure that you press it down hard and <laughs> really easy as I sit there and struggle to get the end off. Okay, here is the dust cover trimmer. It's a, it's by Logan. It's got a safety uh, feature, and uh, you unscrew it, and it um, and then you tilt it back, and you can see the razor pot. You know, you can see the razor, and that's the part obviously that cuts it. If you're left-handed, there's also, uh, you can also reverse it. I uh, don't know how to do that, but I know that extra part that you see sticking out by my thumb is uh, for left people who are left-handed. We're almost there. Okay, I'm flipping my painting and I'm laying it on top of the dust cover I've measured. I know there's nothing underneath. I know that uh, there's nothing in between the painting and the dust cover. There's nothing under the dust covers, you know, anything, a nail or something that could put a hole in it. Uh, so I'm pressing down on the painting onto the dust cover to help it stick. I then uh, pull my painting out and I go around all four sides with my hand underneath to make sure it's nice and, uh, you know, it's sticking well to the painting. And it's as simple as that. Uh, and once you get done with that, you will, you will flip the painting back over and you're going to fold down the sides of the dust cover so that you can get ready to trim it. Okay, so I'm about to do that now. Notice that I left that piece of dust cover uh, folded under the painting. That's just to help me trim it a little as tight as I can so that the, the paper is nice and taut. Okay, so here's the trimmer, and I'm about to start uh, trimming off the edges. So I'm just gonna demonstrate that. You take the trimmer and you hold it flush against the side of your frame, the outside of your frame, and you're going to kind of hold it up at an angle and make sure that that part, that silver part that you see, that it's, that it's flush up against it and you apply your a, a good amount of pressure, not too much, you don't wanna, even, you, you can't hurt this, believe me, you cannot hurt this. You are going to, uh, okay, there it goes now. I'm gonna apply my pressure, I'm keeping it at an angle, notice how I'm, notice how I'm holding it, and uh, any day now, <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, and I'm cutting it. And I'm gonna do that on all four sides. Don't be afraid of this process. I've said it in the last video. It's, it, don't be intimidated by it. It's not hard. The pressure that you apply to the wood, it, you know, I say you can't hurt the wood. I've never hurt the wood 
Um, I, I, you, you need to apply a good amount of pressure, but you don't need to dig into it like you're cutting into a steak. You'll know, you'll feel it. You'll feel the, you know, you'll feel it against the wood and you'll just know what to do. It's a, it's a very easy way to trim it. And, uh, it just worked beautifully. Every time I've used this, I've never been disappointed. Any small mistake I might've made, I've been able to fix. So... It's a great little tool, works works perfect. Okay, so I go down all sides of, with the trimmer and then I um, take off, it, it just peels right off, the dust cover peels right off. Uh, there's the last, I guess I wanna show you one more up close so you can see. And um, here I am peeling off the tape. You see that some of it, you just peel right off, you just take it right off there. Anything that's left, you can just move along with your finger and, uh, you know, it just comes off nice and clean. And you can see the edge of the, the frame there, the very thin white piece. I don't know why I'm showing you the tape again, but I guess I was just double checking. Oh my God, there I am measuring it again. I, it's too much. Uh, it's a half inch. And uh, so you're just going to rub it off and you're just going to just keep peeling it and take it all off and you're going to see how beautiful it looks um, on the edges. It's nice and even. It's It looks wonderful. It really does. And uh, there's a little piece there. I'm just grabbing that. Okay, so after that, I'm um, showing you that picture because it has the felt tips, the felt uh, stickers at the bottom. That is because that is uh, that's the, the bottom part goes against the wall. The rest of it stays very close to the wall, but not on the wall, typically, depending on how you have it, uh, what kind of hooks you have. So here I am. I brought the other painting out, the other side of this diptych, because I realized that I didn't put these felt, uh, these felt um, stickers on. So I'm going to do it on all, on both of these. So you just do it in the corner the bottom corner, I flipped it over to make sure I was at the bottom. If you're not, it's no big deal. If it's there's some on the top too, it's, it doesn't hurt it. Um, but uh, you don't need it. So you just put it on the bottom of both of them. Now, these two paintings as of right now, I still don't know what kind of, uh, how I want, um, what I want to put at the top. Do I want to hang it with a plastic coated wire? Do I want to use a tooth? Uh, this that I'm holding up, a tooth um, bracket or tooth, uh, I don't know what it's called, sawtooth hook that you hammer in. Uh, I don't know if I want to use that. Um, they might also be big enough that you can nail them into the frame. Uh, the, uh, the other thing, excuse me, that you can use are the D-hooks. This is about how far down I would go using a wire-coated... Uh, plastic coated wire. I would do that. These are heavy, so I might double up the wire. Uh, that is one way to do it. The second way to do it, um, probably the way I'll go. I'm really not sure. The other, the other way is are these. Uh, you have to really measure, <laughs> which I do a lot of, to make sure that these are centered correctly. Okay, uh, there might be more than one way to do that. That's how I learned. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of this, guys. And uh, the next frame is just what it looks like on the back. And um, I really hope this helped you. Have a really, really super day. Go out there and create. Don't be afraid. Uh, have fun. Jump into it.